Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of creating a progressive web app with a React application using the Workbox. In the previous episode, we set up the Workbox Webpack plugin using Ingest Manifest. And we went ahead and um, used this plugin here. We provided it a source. Uh, it's going to use the source as sr-sw as our source. And it's going to output a sw.js file. So as you can see that in the disk folder, it's outputted when you run build. And this is a service worker file. And then you're going to add all of the configurations here in a moment. Uh, but for now, let's start with registration of the service worker. So I've created a file called service worker registration inside of the source directory. And here is where we're going to register our service worker. Now, in order for us to register the service worker, we are going to use a package called workbox window. So take a look. So this is workbox. So what is this workbox window? Well, it's a package uh, which is a set of modules that are intended to run in the window context. Uh, which is to say inside of your web page and they are complement to other workbox packages that run in the service worker. So the key features as you can see is to simplify the process of service worker registration and update by helping developers to identify more most critical moments in service worker lifecycle and make it easier to respond to those moments. So these are some of the features but um, I'm just going to let you know one of the key reasons why I'm using the workbox window rather than you know registering it traditionally so let's say for example you are building a progressive web application and the first time it was deployed the data was cached but if you make any changes to your code and it's deployed the next time of course there has to be a mechanism in a way to let the user know that something has changed and the cache needs to be burst it needs to be updated now if you go by standard way, only when all the browser windows controlled by the previous worker are closed, then it becomes safe for the new service worker to active. Now you can manually control that by calling skip waiting. However, most of the time you should only do that after asking the user if they want to get the latest update. So on some application, you must have seen something like there is a new update available and then there's a pop up. You click on OK and the page gets refreshed and the whole cache gets burst. So thankfully, uh, Workbox window helps us achieve that. And uh, it's a new window library uh, introduced in Workbox 4 that aims to simplify the common tasks on the window side like we just discussed. OK, so with that in mind, we're going to install the Workbox window. So I'm going to say npm install Workbox window. And while this is installing it, let's take a look at its implementation. So I'm going to go ahead and import it. So I'm going to go into my service worker registration file, import workbox from workbox window. And then rather than just directly calling, you know, service worker navigator and registering it, I'll rather do it in a function. So then I can export the function and then I can just use it wherever I want, right? So I'll say export default function register service worker and then over here i'm going to check if production process dot env dot node env so remember that when we are running the production build we are passing this value for the node env equals production which means when you're running the build uh, in the production mode this value will be equal to production we only want to uh, run the PWA in production, not in development. I don't want to go ahead and cache, uh, you know, everything in development. But if you want to test it in development, you can. But ideally, I have seen some issues when testing Workbox locally because Webpack is constantly watching and it's generating those packages and it kind of clashes somehow. And I will show it to you in a moment that when we run in development mode, what kind of errors you get and what kind of issues there are which you will get as a kind of a warning. So, but we will talk about that. But if you want to test it, you can do npm run serve, which we, uh, you know, discussed in the previous video. And you can do serve, and then it's going to run it on the localhost 5000 in production mode, and everything will work fine. Okay, so we check that. So if it's not equal to production, I'm just going to return. Okay, but if that's not the case, now let's continue. 
Uh, I'm just going to check if service worker in navigator. So if navigator has service worker, then w equals new workbox. I'm going to instantiate a new op new workbox. And then what's my service worker path? So it's sw.js. Remember that's the output uh, which is here and it'll be sw.js. So I'm just going to give the name over here. Okay. And then take a look what we need to do next. You just need to register it. Okay. So w dot register wb wb not wp wb dot register okay so this is going to register the service worker there is one more thing we need to do and that is to be able to update the application you want to show some kind of a pop-up in case if there's a change in the application if you made a change in the code base and if you redeployed your application then uh, there needs to be some kind of notification to the user i mean you could you could skip that and you could silently just update the application and burst the cache, right? But uh, in this demo, we're going to do with um, a message just to show you that it's actually working. And then it's up to you, you know, what option you want to choose. So we'll say if event.update. Remember, we want to do it only on the update and um, not otherwise. Uh, so what we're going to do is we will put an event listener. So that's where this workbox window shines because it helps us simplify the common tasks on the window side. So what we're going to do now is we'll say wp dot add event listener. So we're going to listen to an event called installed. If service work is installed, we're going to get event object. So we're going to have a callback and inside of this, if event dot update if it's an update is update so is update is going to be true if something has changed then if you can use confirm don't use this confirm idly in production this for just testing and demo purposes uh, use more of something like uh, create a pop-up yourself uh, don't use this confirm it's it's not really um a good way of doing doing it okay so new app update is available click okay to refresh okay so user is going to see a pop-up in case if the app has been updated uh, on the subsequent build and subsequent deployment uh, and then window dot location dot reload what reload is going to do is basically it's going to reload the application also clear any of the cache pre-existing cache okay so to sum it up we have created a function we have installed workbox window we have checked if it's a production if not return uh, then if service worker is in navigator then go ahead and instantiate workbox give it the name of the uh, service worker file script url and then listen to the event install event and then if it's installed then if it's updated the application is updated give a confirmation to the user if user clicks okay go ahead and re reload the page and clear the cache okay and um, and then we register the service worker okay all right this will only be called in case if the app is updated otherwise it'll just be register so that's how you register it and uh, all i'm going to do is now go back to our indexed dot js go back to our index dot js import it import register service worker and then just call this function here okay so this is going to go ahead and register the service worker for us all right so that's all you have to do to register the service worker and in the next video we're going to go ahead and configure the our sw uh, js file src-swjs file where we're going to set up the pre-caching and stuff all right and then you'll see that uh, the service worker has been registered etc so i'll give you the demo of that so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and do follow me on twitter my twitter handle is coditech 
and do follow me on github my github panel is imran eight sayed uh, please do start my, my repository to support my work and i'm gonna see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye